I mean, that would be a good idea all the time. Any hooser. So what we have here is I have something not kind of similar to what y'all have. I have a label, I have a button, and on the next page, just for the sake of doing it, I have the label. And the label ain't important because the label's just showing us what the variable has on it. Okay. So if you look at view controller one, we're just going to talk about what's actually there right now. So view controller one, I have a variable called data, and that would be a lot like your score variable. Okay. But I want data to be something that goes from one page to the next page to the next page. So I want it to pop back up over here. And once again, I've got data. And you can name it data if you want to. I just named it data2 so it's easier to see that, okay, data2 is on page 2. Data, the other data is on page 1. But it's all the same variable at the end of the day. So the problem is, is when you're running this, it, it has no idea of knowing that it's the same variable. The one thing that I'm going to show you right quick that was what actually was the screw up was if you look, when you click on your view controller, if you look up here in the module right underneath the class, and that's going to be on your identity inspector, if you look in the module, it should say push data. And you see inherit model, uh, module from target, that checkbox needs to be checked. It's very important. When you click on your next view controller, in module you should see push data. My module was undefined, so there was nothing there. So that's where my screw up was. It just, it literally, when I was pushing it, did not know still yet what this was. So I clicked that little checkbox. I put, I clicked my drop down box, click push data, problem solved. So when we're running this, we're going to run our little segue thing. It's just to show from here to here. Now here's the big difference, okay? The big difference is instead of having a button click like you're used to in action, it's going to look a little different. So if you look on here, I have my variable, I have my text box, which is where I'm doing everything, but I don't actually have a button click. So I actually have this function down here at the very bottom, and it's inside the first curly bracket. That's important to know. It's inside this curly bracket, but it's outside of the last override function curly bracket. And it's an override function as well, and it's prepare for segue. So what it does is when you click that button, and this is when any button is clicked, so center, sender any. So when any button is clicked, it's going through all these little steps, and I'll give you this chunk of code to make this happen because, yeah. <laughs> but it's going through all these steps, and what it's doing when this button happens it is creating a constant, because it's a let. It's creating a constant called second VC. All right? And that second VC is using VC2, which is the name of my second view controller. So the name of my second view controller is VC2. And then when it, the segue destination is VC2. So it's basically saying I have a constant called VC2, and I'm going to send data to it, and it's, the data is going to VC2. So there's, these are actually two different references, but it just it's in there. It's the same name. And below let, below the constant, I'm saying second VC dot data two, which is the name, if you remember, of the variable on the second view controller. So the on second VC data two is equal to the integer of text dot text. Text is the name of my text box here. So what happens? is the text that goes in here and I click go to next so it is sending the text from this which is text.text .text, to that page now it's showing up in this label and you don't have to have a label for it to go to that's not important okay I'm actually sending this to a variable all right so if you go to VC2 and you look at VC2 and it's going to have in the override function you have to do this as well in the override function view did load that means when the view loads I have just so it's in the label I have the name of this label right here is called show and it's show dot text is equal to the string of data two. data two's here so in theory I could not put this here at all and my variable's still there the only thing I'm doing here is making this label show. I don't care about, the, I don't really want the points being showed from page to page. It's going to be the background. Does that make sense? The important thing is, is you need to know 
how to make, I mean, you can honestly do nothing on this page right here, on the view controller page, other than name this variable. Now, the thing you need to pay attention to is, you see how I have this variable declared out? Mm -hmm. You have to declare the variable like that. You have to do it because you cannot have these strings. Because if I'm adding to each time, that's something you'll have to look into. So, when you do your check, right answer stuff, and you do your plus whatever, you're going to have to do that stuff in here. Okay? So, you may have to move some stuff around, but you're not actually having to do much more than add these two lines of code and two curly brackets. On some of my pages, I deleted the override functions at the bottom. Okay. Me errors. <laughs> yeah, they do that sometimes. Um, usually, when you run it, it will regenerate those overrides for you. Um, you may have to type those back in. Okay. But I did this as a screen recording. That way, I can upload this. And could you email? No, I'll put it on YouTube and I'll share it on. Uh, I'll share it on uh, Echo.